Hi everybody, thanks for uh, attending another video. So today we're going to be solving a question called maximum subarray. Um, this question is on the scale on the easier side of things, but I thought it would be value to talk about it because it touches a couple of really key concepts and fundamental things you learn um, in programming. Uh, I won't say what it is until the end of the description or the solution because if I tell you what it is, it's going to pretty much give the question away. So uh, before I go into that, let's actually look at the question and see what we're trying to tackle. All right, cool. So when we look at this question, um, let's read it a little bit. It's saying that given an integer uh, array of numbers or nums, find the continuous subarray containing at least one number which has the largest sum and return its sum. So in layman's term, uh, you're giving an array of numbers and you define a sequence within uh, that array that is continuous um, that forms the largest number, right? So let's look at an example. So in this example, you're giving this array, right, of negative two, yada, 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 yada. So the naive, one of the, one of the possibilities that you have to check is like, okay, well, I could add all these numbers. Does that give me the sum? Uh, the maximum sum in this case it doesn't right um, when in this case the actual maximum summation is between these numbers right here so what I mean by that it's like if you're 4 minus 1 plus 2 plus 1 that equals to 6 right so therefore your maximum subarray um, is 6 now there's a really interesting point here because this is not asking you to return the actual subarray. They're just asking you to return the number, right? The one sum. So it's very important when you go through these questions to look at, okay, what are my inputs and what is the expected output? Because if the expected output is just a single number and I don't have to care about what's um, like where, the whole series of array, maybe the question is actually, a lot easier than it would be if I were to ask to store the whole array, right? Um, so let's look at this question. Um, let's see what kind of strategies we could do before we code. Um, so what are, what I like to do when I look at these questions is like think about okay, well, uh, what kind of patterns um, does the actual question give me, right? So in this question, they're given an array, and the only pattern I know is that I need to uh, add things while I go, go uh, on every element of the array uh, and create a sum out of it, right? That's, so it's always incrementing that way. So that's one pattern. I'm not sure I'm gonna use it in my question, but that's a pattern. Another pattern thing I need to know is that the solution will be at least one number because um, they did say uh, here that will be at least one number, right? So these, and, and one of the third things we need to do, know is like we're trying to find the largest sum, right? Um, so let's look at it. And if you go into this first question, you probably think of, okay, you probably want to think of like the most absolutely brute force way to solve this. Uh, one of those most inefficient way and a brute force way to check this is literally check every element as you iterate through um, the array, right? So what I mean by that is like, okay, I go negative two and then start accumulating, accumulating, accumulating. Of course, you'll have a variable there that stores like, okay, as I accumulate, if it's maximal, if it's a higher number, then you know store that number and boom, bingo, I get a result, right? And then I move on to the next number, keep accumulating, 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 so on and so forth, again, accumulating, accumulating, and so on and so forth. Um, however, you would notice that you know as I go through these numbers, I'm doing basically the same thing over and over and over again, right? Uh, I'm revisiting every element over and over and over and again. So that is actually probably not the most efficient way to solve this problem. Um, so let's look at some other patterns we could identify. Maybe that could help us solve this problem. Um, so actually, when we look into this question, we almost have, uh, there's like a global scope and almost like a local uh, decision I have to make, right? Um, as I go to each element of the cell, I can also have to make two decisions, which is, well, am I going to uh, basically use the uh, cumulative value that I've accumulated in the past and add it to what I have right now? Or should I just say like, well, you know, my current number is bigger than what I've accumulated so far, so why do I even bother adding stuff behind me, right? 
So this is a pretty cool concept. So let's see how it works. Um, in this in this example, it'll be like negative two. Well, there's nothing that has accumulated so far, so I don't have to worry about it. So maybe negative two is so far my accumulated number. Then I move them to number one here. Okay, well, if my accumulated number so far is negative two, but my current number right now is one, why would I take the stuff behind me, right? Because it's only gonna drag me down. So I'm gonna use my current number, which is one, as the you know my, my my value pretty much this is my gonna be my, be my starting point so i'm gonna go like i'm gonna ditch everything from behind me because as i accumulated it's less than a number if i were to start right now on number one so therefore i'm gonna start from number one right okay cool so let's go to over here negative three and so far i've accumulated all the way up to one um neg well negative three plus uh one is negative two and that is definitely greater than negative three so what does that mean is that all right um, you win, you know, the thing about cumulative from before and add it to myself. Well, that's bigger than uh, what I have right now currently, so therefore I'm going to start accumulating it, right? So this cumulative number would be negative two. Um, and then we go to the next number, which is four, right? When we're at four, we're like, okay, well, four plus negative two, what does that equate, right? Four plus negative two is just two. Well, why would I accumulate stuff from the past when I could just start from four? Right, so this type of pattern is actually a really easy way to like. Okay, well, if I keep doing this, going on, moving forward, forward, moving forward, I actually will identify the maximum a lot faster. You could do it in linear time. All I have to do is you know accumulate and make a decision at every point. Should I continue to accumulate, or should I just start fresh? Continue to accumulate or start fresh? Right. So that's a, that's a pretty much the solution here. So let's try and write it up and see if this hypothesis is true. Uh, I'm gonna make it more ES6 friendly and make it more shorter characters because I don't like having so many characters. All right, cool. So one of the things I always like to do is gonna define my solution. My solution, um, I'm just gonna say by default will be the first variable of the number. Okay, cool. Now we're gonna have to iterate through the array, right? So what are we gonna do? For let uh, i equals the index, which is equal to one. Why I'm starting from one? Because I can't, I can't, I'm not gonna make me able to check what's I've accumulated so far in the past because at zero, because like there's nothing there, right? So I might as well start from here. So I'm gonna go start from one. Okay, cool. So one and then i is gonna be less than the nums dot length, length, if I, if I can spell. And then I plus plus. All right, cool. So in this one, we're gonna basically say that, um, I know this is not the greatest habit to do. Um, if I wanted to, I could create like a cache, uh, cache uh, array that basically, um, like a cache array that, that is like, you know, a, you know, I could create a cache array that, you know, so I don't have to uh, mutate the input number. Um, typically in programming, you don't want to mutate your inputs because that's not a bad thing to do. But for now, because this question, I'm trying to be a little cheeky and get, get some speed. I'm going to mutate this input number. Cool. So what do I do here is going to say like, okay, well, my numbers at I um, is going to be uh, the math.max. Um, of my existing nums at i. So either gonna be one, or it will be my nums at i, plus the things I've accumulated so far, which is nums at i minus one, All right? So these are the things I'm gonna check. Okay, well, is my number gonna be, and then that's gonna implement what I was gonna talk about. Now, as I do this, I can actually go and say, well, my solution can, basically be the math.max of my solution or uh, my nums at i, right? So now I know that, okay, well, I could just identify my solution if it's, you know, as if it's a maximum, then I can return it, right? And finally, I'm just gonna return the solution. Great. So let's take a, let's take a quick run and submit and see if this is uh, good. Um, and bingo, it works.
uh, I hope you guys like this video. If you like these type of stuff, uh, remember to subscribe and like, and also write some comments so I know what to focus on next. Uh, the next couple of series of questions, I might start doing uh, more concept based and then I'll go into questions because um, I feel like it's not effective to just grind through questions. It's actually more effective to understand the concepts first. Um, and I think the first one I'll probably do will be something along recursion. Um, if you guys like this, then, you know, like I said, subscribe and hit the like. All right. Peace.